Let's start with the tool you'll probably use the most, the Select tool. The Select tool, as the name implies, selects objects. In order to edit an object, it has to be selected. The Select tool looks like a pointer. To use this tool, simply click on the Selector Tool button located at the top of the main toolbar. Next, move the mouse point toward the middle of the drawing area. To select an object with a fill, click within the object. You'll know an object is selected because it will have a thin red outline with these nine control handles. To select an object without a fill, click on the outline of the object. To select multiple objects, hold the shift key down and click on another object. When holding the shift key down, we click on an object that has already been selected, it will deselect. Another way of selecting multiple objects is by drawing a bounding box using the select tool. Position the select tool in the upper left corner of the objects we want to be part of our selection. Click and hold the mouse, Start moving it toward the other corner, and the bounding box starts to form until we release the mouse button. Any part of an object that's within the bounding box will be selected. Let's deselect this by clicking outside the selected objects. If the control key is held down while drawing the bounding box, then only the objects completely within the bounding box are selected. Once the bounding box encircles the objects we want to select, we can release the mouse and the objects are selected. In this case, since the rectangle was completely within the bounding box, it was the only one selected. In this drawing, we have several objects with different colors and it's fairly intricate. Imagine if we needed to select just these small stars within the spade shape we'd have to select them individually, which would be a little tedious. This is where we can use an option that allows us to select by attribute. These stars have a yellow fill. If we click on the Edit pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Select, click on Select by Attribute. This window appears. Here we can tell the software to select objects with a specific attribute, in this case, whether by the fill color or outline color. In this case, we will click on the fill tab, choose the color yellow by clicking on this checkmark box, click OK, and all the objects with a yellow fill are selected. We can do this with any object color or type. As always, there is an easier way of selecting these stars. We'll click outside the selected objects to deselect them, and this time we'll select only one of the stars. Click on the Edit pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Select, click on Select Similar Color, and all the star objects are selected. This works with object types as well. If we switch to our original drawing, select a circle, Click on the Edit pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Select, click on Select Similar Objects, and all the circle objects are selected. Before we move on to the next portion of this lesson, you've probably noticed that throughout this lesson we have seen that to deselect objects, we can simply click outside the area of the selected objects. This can also be done by clicking on the Edit pull-down menu hovering the mouse over Select, and clicking on Deselect All. There's a shortcut key, Control shift a When an object is selected, these eight control handles surround the object. These control handles allow the selected objects to be manipulated. Let's click on this rectangle and play around with the grab handles to see how they function. The handles on the four corners will resize the selected object proportionately until the shift key is pressed 
where it will resize the object non-proportionately. The handles that are on the top, bottom, and sides, on the other hand, will stretch the object. Double clicking on an object while it is selected will change the control handle's function. The four corner handles will rotate the object. The top, bottom, and side handles will skew the object. In other words, it will allow us to sort of slant the object. Let's undo these changes by clicking on the Edit pull-down menu and clicking Undo. We need to do a couple of undos, so let's use the shortcut key of Ctrl-Z a couple of times until we have the original shape. Keep in mind, that these same manipulations can be adjusted in Design Central, where instead of adjusting the object visually, it can be adjusted numerically. For instance, once an object is selected, we can edit the object by adjusting the values. The first value adjusts the width of the object. The second value adjusts the height of the object. Notice though, that at the bottom of Design Central, there's the checkbox labeled Proportional. If this is checked, then any changes made to the height value will affect the width value, and vice versa. If any changes are made to the width value, will affect the height value. For instance, if a value is changed to 15 inches, the height is automatically adjusted to keep the rectangle proportional, in this case 14.91. Let's undo that by pressing Ctrl-Z. This little box of buttons indicates from which point on the object the adjustments will be made from when values are changed. For instance, currently all adjustments are made relative to the center. Now if we were to click the lower left corner and change the width to 15 inches again, press enter. The square is scaled from the lower left corner as opposed to from the center. The next two values are the positioning values of X and Y. The X value being the side-to-side -side positioning and the Y value being the up and down positioning. To demonstrate the next effects, let's use text. The second tab has settings for rotating or slanting selected objects. For instance, entering 45 in this box here rotates the selected objects 45 degrees. The entry box below is where we would enter the degree of the angle if we wanted to skew or slant the object. There are also these quick rotate buttons to quickly rotate the object to either 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, or to mirror the object. The last tab in Design Central, as discussed in the previous lesson, has settings or options that are specific to the selected object's type. For instance, when text is selected, we'll have some options that are related specifically to text in two last tabs. The first being the character style, and the second being for the paragraph.